I'm on my way to Casa del Dama outside of Medellin in Guarne and I'm about to do um, a 10 day silent meditation retreat a lot of people just call it a Vipassana which I think in Pali means reality basically what I'll be doing is sitting in silence and like there'll be a bunch of other people in, in the retreat center but I won't be able to talk with anyone no writing no reading nothing it's just internal reflection and meditating on <laughs> whatever I feel whatever that comes up in my in my head um, and I've done one of these before but like I haven't actually started like thinking about it until like right now and now I'm like not freaking out I just feel a lot of like <laughs> anxiety and energy and all these things but I'm really excited about it but I won't be able to talk about like the process of like what my head is going through at all during it but then afterwards I can let you know all about what the experience is like but it's like the experience that I had before it's it's like nothing else honestly it's you can't really describe it <laughs> in words because like it's like more fundamental almost it, you can't really rationalize it in the same way and it's beautiful so I'm really excited to be able to <laughs> to talk again. 10 days, silence. Hopefully I won't be croaking. Hopefully my throat muscles will survive their atrophy. <laughs> silence. So, I finished my 10 day Vipassana silent meditation retreat. I haven't talked to anyone, or maybe three times the entire 10 days for things that were too complicated to, to do without conversation. Um, but I've tried to avoid all eye contact, all conversation, and just focus on myself for 10 days. And I have shared a little bit of eye contact with some birds and some ants and maybe a couple beetles and spiders but otherwise I've, I've really just tried to avoid all of those interactions and some of you might be thinking that this is exactly what I've been trying to avoid my entire life this is my torture and I would like to contest that and and I have a joy that I didn't know I was really missing after experiencing like so deeply my own my own atomness for 10 days uh so there's just like this idea of happiness that I didn't know could go deeper that I didn't know I could like you don't know who you could be without experiencing it and when you have all these really strong ideas of self it limits yourself from really exploring exploring past that so Vipassana I would really recommend it to anyone and I've asked for some testimonials as well from other meditators at the retreat. Um, recom ¿Recomendarías Vipassana a un amigo? Sí, claro, totalmente. Es lo que voy a hacer ahorita. Uf, super. Claro que sí. Claro. Eh, sí, claro que sí. Una muy buena experiencia. Sí, claro que sí. Eh, sí, o no? sí, sí le recomendaría. Sí, a más de un amigo, a todo el mundo. Eh, bueno, una experiencia maravillosa. Oh, absolutely. ¿Y por qué? Porque sí te limpia, te libera la mente de tanta bobada, de tanta suciedad que uno tiene en, en, viviendo en la ciudad. Entonces lo mejor para hacer. Yo lo hago cada año, ya llevo tres años haciéndolo. Porque te enseña que en la vida hay dolor, uh, pero por eso no vas a sufrir, sino que sabes que la vida es así, lo entiendes, lo observas y puedes salir adelante con eso, puedes enseñarle a las personas que puedes salir adelante de esa manera y tú salir adelante sin tener que hacer sufrir a otros y sufrir todo. 
porque es el mejor regalo del mundo para sufrir menos y ser un poco más feliz. Eh, te, cambia, te cambia la vida y un antes y un después, eh, te transforma, ayuda a liberarte del sufrimiento y ayuda a, a que le ayudes a los demás. Es una experiencia agradable, eh, todas las personas que quieran realmente saber qué es Vipassana, mejor experimentarlo. Porque es magnífico, porque se siente el cuerpo, porque se despierta la mente, porque se encuentra con el espíritu. Por mm. eso lo hago. Gracias. Qué bueno, gracias Adam Witzel. Porque es una forma de vivir y es una forma de salir de la desdicha. Mm. Es una transformación muy profunda, ¿no? Enfrentarte contra vos mismo, con tus miedos, tus inquietudes, eh, ganas de salir corriendo todos los días y de repente transformar todo eso en una paz y en una conciencia de uno mismo que es maravilloso. Mm. Sad. Gracias, sad. Gives you peace of mind, um, a lot of harmony and uh, makes you feel a lot happier. Mm -hmm. But what exactly is Vipassana? So before I did my first meditation retreat, I literally had no clue what meditation was to be honest like I heard it so often I thought I kind of knew you like focus on your breath or something and like, what exactly about your breath I don't know but my friend Ren came back from a Vipassana and she was just really quiet and like ex kind of embodied more what I wanted to be like all of this quiet she had this wisdom that wasn't loud that didn't need to be shared exactly it was almost a wisdom of of being like a presence and then i was i wanted to do the retreat so i i signed up for the 10-day retreat and it made it really easy not knowing exactly what it is to so just say yeah i'm gonna do it and i was silent for 10 days and after that i was like the meditation is the path to where i want to go i've always been really interested in exploring myself like i always had this hint that i didn't exactly know who i who I am. Like, how could you not know who you are? You've lived your entire life within this body. How could you not know who you are? Uh, but I, I did it at some level. And this is a process of really understanding subconsciously. Like we're, we're given our conscious ability to understand yourself. But like, for example, when you want to sit down and do your homework and you sit down and you don't do your homework, how is it possible to, on one hand, say I'm doing this thing and not do it. Like, you literally are, are like, competing with yourself somewhere. And so I think that meditation is really a way to look inside fundamentally without reacting to, to see deeper into, to like, who I am. Like, what are the reactions that are creating this entire experience I'm having? And so what it looks like in the Vipassana retreat is... You start in the first three days with, uh, with anapana, is focusing on your breath, on the sensation of your breath, and that helps you concentrate and kind of relax into the experience of your body. And then the, the rest of the days are with vipassana meditation, which is focusing on the sensations of your body. And this brings you really deep in, into what exactly is happening in all of these, this creation of self and all of these reactions that you have every day that we've attributed with our entire experience of life. But honestly, on a fundamental level, we don't know, we aren't paying attention um, to what that really is. So I think it, Vipassana is an amazing experience to get to know yourself, as absurd as that may sound. Uh, and then, so the actual breakdown of of the of a pasta day is that we wake up at 4 30 a.m and we meditate for two hours then we eat breakfast it's a simple vegetarian breakfast and all the food is vegetarian and then meditate for three hours and then have lunch and then meditate for four hours and then the for old students there's no there's only tea and for for the students doing vipassana for the first time they have some fruit and some some crackers. So I then would basically fast for like 18 hours until breakfast again, which wasn't that hard. And also the silent part, that's what scares everyone away. It's like the silent part isn't that hard. Uh, I think what most people are honestly scared of, but it's really hard to articulate, is that they're, they're scared of themselves. Like 
we we constantly our actions are in a way distractions from experiences of life we, we want these particular experiences um and the simple experience of life isn't enough at some level and i think i'm slowly learning that it is enough and that all of these reactions that we have in our body so i'm actually focusing on my sensations and i'm like oh this is pain and then you look at the pain and it's like this is pain is vibrations and then these vibrations pass away and and then you start stop looking at, at it like pain and we have so many of these things that are like even our idea of self is really strong and solid and you can't really break it like no i'm adam i'm adam witzel i've lived 24 years i have a resume i have i went to to university i have a degree like this says i'm adam witzel i have my card that says i'm adam witzel that my passport that says i'm adam witzel my friends will say I'm Adam Witzel. And then this this Adam Witzel, you have so many ideas of who who you are packaged packaged inside of it. And so Vipassana, you kind of break those down a little bit. And for example, I before I did Vipassana, I always considered myself I identified, I wanted other people to see me as this kind this really energetic, rambunctious person. And after Vipassana, I was, realized how much I love calm, how much I love like this peace and just being quiet and listening. And, and that sometimes that changes. Sometimes I really want to be energetic. And when you're so attached to this certain state of being and it changes, then you have to be able to accept it if you really want to be happy like constantly. And I, th I think it is possible to be happy constantly once you realize that all of these reactions of anger and fear and hatred and all of that are basically coming up as a response to things that go against what we we want but what we want is really always there it's always present um so vipassana really really opened that up and and it wasn't easy there's so many moments where like these reactions are so big and they feel like they'll never stop. So one of the really important elements of Vipassana is equanimity. So you look at all these sensations and you look at them equanimously. You don't respond. You cuz the you you see the sensation in your leg and you're like, "Oh, that's a sensation." You're like, what does it feel like? Uh, uh, and it will pass away and it does. Like think about all of these sensations that you've had for your entire life. And how many of them are present now? None. Only ex exactly what you're experiencing right now. So, the being able to look at them on a very moment-to-moment -moment basis and like let them pass away, that simple action is so powerful. It changes how I interact with everyone. Like I would during the vipassana, I would literally be in this this funk having this huge reaction to like these sensations i've been observing trying to be equanimous it's impossible it's not going to change i'm leaving and then i'd literally be walking out like through the the kitchen area and people would just be sitting there and i'd be like so negative i'd be like oh my gosh this person's bad in this way this person's eating so loudly like why didn't they push their chair in all the way and I'm like externalizing all of these feelings and these people aren't even interacting with me. They're literally sitting quietly and eating their food and I'm having this huge negative response. And I think that's so much proof of, of how much we externalize these things that are internal and Vipassana like makes me, you look inside and that's, that's scary. It doesn't allow us to offset all this burden of unhappiness on others. And that's exactly what we need. We need to be able to, to look inwardly and stop doing that. So it's an amazing practice to do that. Because uh, you're, yeah, you're literally, you have no external fact. You're not doing anything. You're like, you're sitting there and being aware. And it's not like you're walking down the street and some, someone like punched you in the face. And that would be like, oh, I'm angry. And even that, you're angry. You feel this, this anger. You don't need it. You've been, you've given it within yourself even though it's very violent big action and then once you get to vipassana it's like all these tiny little things that you now you've trying to you're trying to externalize it on this blade of grass and you're trying to go anywhere but inside 
um, for blame, and and you can't. And so all this the silence kind of acts as as like a, what's a good analogy? It like burns it all burns it all off, kind of. If you have, can't think of a good analogy. But it it really just kind of purifies things in, in it's just like a, a blank like a what do you call where a surgeon does surgery like it's ah oh, what's the word but it's it's free of any bacteria or anything that could create more of a reaction it's just clean um, and so that that allows you to really go deep and and know that it is yourself it is internal. And so after, yeah, these 10 days, I felt just really calm and quiet and loving. And like, this is the life that I want to live. And so like Goinka says every day, may all beings be happy.